bullseye people arrow is hitting his mark man season two i mean season three episode two review right here title of this one's called sarah and arrow continues to deliver full fledged this may be my favorite show on tv at the moment okay right now because looking at last episode and then looking at this episode they are just bringing it and looking at what's coming up in the season three did you see the previews for the next episode did you see thea queen or should i say thea merlin whooping ass like that did you see that okay so five months i guess the person can really change i know she's going to be going through some transitions but i wasn't expecting anything on that level taking down full full two grown men in practice at the same time okay so I guess now she can handle herself. So we we really hit fast forward on Thea Queen's development, man. Uh, so, but let's go ahead and talk about the episode first, okay? Because this episode, this episode in general was good. It was good. It had it. Uh, the emotions were high and everybody was grieving in their own way or dealing with Sarah's death in their own way. And um, man, when, I mean, it was an eye opener when, um, you know, Oliver, Felicity and John came around that corner and you know they saw Sarah's dead body on the table. That is just not how you tell somebody that someone is dead. Okay, that's not how you do it. Okay, Lori. Jeez. Uh, so Lori dragged Sarah's body off the crime scene, put it in her car, drove her over to Oliver's bar, dragged her out of that, and put it on top of the table downstairs. She did all that. Wow. Okay, I like to see that. But you know, if we get logic for a second, okay, let's look at the scene right here. So. Man, Oliver, he is on a mission to get this guy, okay? I'm so, I'm happy he wasn't so filled with rage that he wanted to kill this man because he did make a promise not to basically kill anymore. But Lori, on the other hand, she's willing to take a life, okay? Because she pulled that trigger, and if it did have bullets, that man would be dead. So Lori is fully, like, first she was trusting Oliver to do it, and then when they had that little motorcycle duel, then I was just like, you know, what the hell's going on right there? <laughs> because, uh, I mean... I don't know what that Oliver was doing in that, but um, anyways, when that fell through, Lori was like, she had to take matters, matters into her own hands, and she put the gun out, and uh, she almost, you know, made a mistake that she was going to regret probably forever, because I don't think Lori could handle killing somebody, and like Oliver said, it would not have brought her peace anyway, so, yeah, um, glad that didn't happen, okay, because that would turn Lori into a, a darker side of her character and everything else. So do you think Lori made the right decision about not to telling her father, Detective Lance, about what was going on? Do you think she should have told Sarah? I want to get your feedback on that because, you know, you know, a father deserves the right to know this. His daughter's dead. OK, that's for sure. But this may have been the uh, tipping point for him. The, uh, you know, the point where he cannot take any more. This may have been it right here. So. Um, I don't know. I'm on the fence. I just don't know which way to go. So let me know. Let me know. Did Lori make the right decision in that? And, um, one more thing, man, uh, Roy up in here, the red, the red arrow. Um, when he was, when he was talking to Oliver about Thea and, uh, how he was hiding his note from her and Oliver, he looked so pissed, man. I thought he was about to knock Roy's head off. He looked like he was about to knock Roy out. Okay, so he showed some restraint right there because I, I could tell by his face that it was like a no-brainer. But um, I guess Roy is the only person that may be the gateway to how they find Thea. They probably convinced Roy to call her up and Thea answers the phone for Roy because she did love him at one point in time. And that's probably how they go continue on with next episode, how they're going to get to her and find out where she is and stuff like that. So... Uh, Let's talk about Felicity real quick. I really appreciate her. She had an eye opener in this episode. She realized how short life is and how she needs to actually live her life. She doesn't want to spend her time pursuing a man, Oliver, who may not ever love her or spend her life down there at this. You know, she wants to be more. And um, Ray Palmer's there to pick up the ball. Man, I really enjoyed him. Uh, he made some good speeches and stuff this episode. And um, the man said he spent $1.2 billion to pursue her. Okay, this guy is going overboard big time. Okay, so he definitely has way too much money up his sleeves. I mean, he's willing to give up half of his net worth and um, take off his whole salary for a year to prove a point. So this man's uh, full of philanthropist i don't know if i'm saying that word right or using it in the right context but i would say humanitarian or just very charitable he's a very charitable man and looks like he's just mr golden boy right now but everybody has their flaws and ray ray palmer i think we're gonna see his too because no one's in peer in this okay uh, 
So, um, also about the other archer, I thought he was very good. Um, his fight between him and Oliver, I thought it was very well done. The one where he like, the like Roy, Roy and Oliver versus, uh, the Black Arrow guy. I thought it was very good when he came crashing through the window. That was a nice scene, nice fight scene right there. Uh, when, when Oliver, I man, Oliver looked so pissed, man. When he, uh, took his arrow, shot out the window and then, you know, used it as a grappling hook to go through the other window. I was like, man, what am I watching right here, man? It felt like a movie, man. So the level of production on these scenes like this are just fantastic and, uh, a joy to watch overall. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that's my review right there, man. I really don't have nothing else to talk about. Let me think for a second. Hold on, hold on. Am I missing something? Oh, yeah. It was really sweet how Diggle uh, named their daughter after Sarah. I thought that was a nice touch. Oh, yeah. I forgot to talk about Hong Kong. Okay, so five years ago and where Oliver was then. All right. So what's, uh, what were Oliver and these uh, Asian mentors? Okay, we had one before and uh, when he was in the jungle, that guy. And now we got this guy over here. And Oliver has been uh, given a target to hunt down his friend, Tommy Merlin. Okay, so we brought him back in the show. And I don't know if it's just for one episode like this or we can show him some more and some flashbacks, but you really can't incorporate him in the story no more because we already know that he doesn't know about Oliver and how he was alive and stuff back then. So can't incorporate it too much, but it was nice seeing him back on the show. And uh, it was very interesting and elaborate how they kind of, you know, tricked him into going back to what the way it was, you know, pretending like it was kidnapping and everything. He had hacked his email and stuff. I thought it was very good. Well, well written. Okay. Well written plot. <laughs> and I almost forgot to talk about Sarah. Okay. So yes, yeah, Sarah is gone, man. Seeing her day like that and Oliver closing her eyes and the funeral scene, it was, it was pretty touching. And, uh, I'm sad to see her go off the show, man. She was a badass and, uh, she is going to be missed. But the question is still out there of who killed her. Who could it possibly be? So I talked about this last episode about, uh, the clues we do have. So I'm going to bring them back up again. Sarah, she obviously knew who they were, the person who killed her and they knew her. And, um, she wasn't immediately on guard. So it probably was someone that she didn't think was going to kill her. But we also got some other new information about here that uh, Oliver says that everybody he knows that who's proficient with arrows enough to do this type of kill is in the League of Assassins. But he is like pretty sure the League of Assassins don't kill their own. So the League of Assassins, they may be out of the question. And the only part of the person I know who's really good with arrows is Malcolm Merlin, who's on the scene. But why would he want to kill Sarah? So that doesn't make any sense either. So... I don't know, man. This is a mystery and the only question we're going to have right now, because I think Oliver, I know Oliver is going to find this man or woman who did this. And the uh, only question is, how is he going to deal with them and who is it? And that's all I got to say. Guys, I'm so excited for episode three and what's to come. I mean, seeing Thea and how much she's developing, how much she's learned, and maybe how much she's changed is going to be radical. And I can't wait to see how Oliver deals with that. Does she know the whole truth? Did Malcolm tell Thea the whole truth who Oliver is and that he's the arrow and everything that's going on? I don't know. So, yeah, the cast could be out the bag. And this is happening a lot sooner in the season than I thought it would. I thought this would be like one of the later episodes when we see Thea again. So, yeah, I'm just pretty psyched, man. But, guys, if you did enjoy my review for what it was and you want to help me out, don't forget to uh, give me a thumbs up. That really does help me out. And uh, if you want to subscribe for more Trade TV, feel free to. Next week, we're coming back again for more Arrow Season 3, Episode 3. It's about to go down.